I'm thinking about finishing this Snickers in front of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Really? Yeah, what do you think? Mm. Just snap your fingers and we'll be there. Hey! There we go. <laughs> wow! <laughs> this is marvelous. I've always wanted to come here. Nerd alert. Nerd alert. All right, so I, we went through, uh, last time you left us on DSLRnerd.com, uh, we went through pretty much all the controls that are on most of the DSLRs. True. You've got the green safety rectangle, which is full automatic. Then you've got P, which is program mode, uh, which allows you to adjust a couple of the things, or, or, or allows you to manually change any of the settings that you want. Because um, you can't really change the settings when you're on the green rectangle of safety. You can't really change anything. It's pretty right. much it's all... telling the computer mm -hmm. uh, in the camera the, to go for it. I mm -hmm. trust whatever you want. Um, and you don't always get the best results. You know, that 40% of the time, yeah. that's, that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And I admit I've been in manual or AV mode, and I just can't get the settings right. And I'll go to P and take a few pictures because mm -hmm. I know it's going to, you know, figure it out better than I have. And mm -hmm. if you're in a situation where you've got to capture something, mm -hmm. you can't really be farting around. You got to keep so, moving. You know? Yeah. So, I see. you know, I don't go on the on the green square, but I'll go on P sometimes if I'm if I uh, if I'm capturing if I'm being paid to capture an event and something's just somehow not right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't. You can't miss the shot. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to miss the shot. So you got to go to P sometimes. Um, <laughs> sometimes you got to P. <laughs> can't argue with that. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, so any other questions, really? Um, I wanted to, you know, kind of give you an idea mm -hmm. what um, this really cool lens... I'm going to get off a bulb for a second. Yeah, we can talk about lenses for a bit. Sure. Now, this is, as I said, uh, this is a uh, six... Uh, this is a 17 to 40 millimeter wide angle lens. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you know this as well, but this is a full frame sensor. I know it now. Um, and when you spend some money on a DSLR, uh, they have crop sensor bodies mm -hmm. and full frame. Okay. Um, full frame is a larger, uh, a larger um, sensor, which mm -hmm. is closer to the 35 millimeter mm -hmm. sized image. Okay. Uh, crop is smaller. Mm -hmm. Micro Four Thirds is even smaller. Mm. Uh, the sensors in video cameras are really small. They're mm -hmm. not very big. Um, and um, so when you have a full frame camera, your lens is actually 17 to 40 millimeter. Okay. Uh, uh, if you have a crop sensor camera, you multiply it by 0. 0.6. Mm -hmm. um, so it actually, you know. Mm -hmm. What's so the, the purpose of having these different sizes? Well, um, I have sort of three lenses right now. Um, I have a a 50 millimeter which is a uh on a, on a full frame camera this is really a 50 millimeter versus mm -hmm. on a crop sensor camera on a cheaper camera this is like an 80 80 to 85 millimeter lens i think it mm -hmm. comes out to be like 80 point something okay um so uh you're gaining telephoto basically uh which is not a bad thing some mm -hmm. people keep a crop sensor camera to make their 200 millimeter lens into a 300 and something, you know. Uh -huh. um, but I like uh, having a crop. The larger sensor is better for capturing low light situations without much grain. Oh. Uh, so the be a larger crop or, or, or a full frame camera is much, much better. Um, so my range right now, um, a lot of photographers, especially like wedding photographers, have two basic lenses. There's a 24 to 70 mm -hmm. and a 70 to 200. Aha. Uh -huh. And both of those, the, the L versions of both of those are 2.8. So you have a, a range from 24 millimeter up to 200. Oh, I see. So a lot of photographers you'll see uh, at a wedding, they'll have a lens that's about this size and then they'll have a, a large white lens and that's the um, 70 to 200. And they'll have that on a separate camera. Oh, you don't okay. want to take the time to change lenses. So you have another camera. You just grab that other camera, snap, 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 throw that one down, snap, snap, snap. You sort of I see. Go back and forth between the two. So true pros have two of the exact same camera. Okay. So that they're getting the exact same right uh, settings and exact same. Yeah. And I don't. I have this is uh, I have this full frame sensor, and then I have uh, which is my wife's camera. 
uh -huh. uh, a uh, an XSI, which is a takes the same lenses, but it's a crop. Uh -huh. If I were really a professional, I would have two of these three thousand dollar cameras. I see. Well, perhaps that day will come. Mm -hmm. Probably will one day. Mm -hmm. when we start making decent money at this. Mm -hmm. um, or any money, really. No, I make some money. Yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, so my lens range right now, I've got a 17 to 40. Okay. And then I've got a 50. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if it comes in a range of millimeter, that's mm -hmm. called a zoom. Okay. If it only has one millimeter, like 50, that's called a prime. Ah. Uh, primes uh, are... Primes tend to take better pictures, hmm. uh, just because there's less elements in there. Okay. Um, there's uh, primes typically uh, come in a lower f-stop. Hmm. Uh, like this one's four. Uh, you can get the really expensive one that's a two eight, uh, but this is a one point four. So mm -hmm. that's, it's a prime. Um, zooming, uh, zooming a prime consists of moving your walking forward and, and walking backwards. Okay. So that's the zoom in a prime. I see. Okay. But primes are really nice quality, really good optics. Mm -hmm. um, but your feet become the zoom, basically. Mm -hmm. Simply moving the camera closer or farther from the... Uh, yeah. Whatever your... And then uh, my last lens here is I have a 100 millimeter macro lens, mm -hmm. uh, which is great for close up, but also really good for taking 100 millimeter pictures. Mm. And it can focus then everywhere in between very close up and 100 millimeters away. I see. Or uh, at the at the 100 millimeter focal length. Mm -hmm. So this is um, you know pretty nice for taking uh, shots at a, at a distance. So I really bought this for a macro lens, but it also is a pretty good fashion lens. Uh -huh. When you get a uh, model to pose for you, uh, typically, they're kind of, you know, you know professional models are thin mm. and have angular faces mm -hmm. and such. And um, shooting them at a further focal length kind of um, softens, softens that look a bit look, for them. Okay. Now, it'll take a, a hefty person and, and make them even bigger, sort of mm. look even sort of heftier. <laughs> so, you want to shoot them closer up. But models, huh. the further are you away from them, that kind of smooths out. Uh, the look of them and makes them look more attractive. It's interesting. Mm. Beverage. Beverage break. Um, Beverage. So this 100 millimeter is an awesome macro <clears throat> lens, but it's also pretty darn good uh, focal length for shooting fashion as well. Mm -hmm. So I got two things for you know for the price of this lens. Um, fashion. Fashion. <laughs> So I keep the 70 to 40 on a lot. You're welcome to um, mm -hmm. take a try here. Right. Um, I, you can operate this camera by looking through the uh, through the, the viewfinder, through the viewfinder yeah. but you can also operate it by the screen um, hitting this and, and using the screen. Mm -hmm. However, it auto focuses much slower if you're if you're doing that. See how kind of long it takes to mm -hmm. lock focus. Yeah. Versus this is much faster. I see. And the reason why it's much faster, um, in order to hit this button and see what's on the screen, the mirror has to flip up. Uh -huh, so I'm not, okay. you can't see anything through the viewfinder when the screen's oh, going. Yeah, you're right. Because right now the mirror's flipped up permanently. Mm -hmm. And you're just watching, you're, you're seeing what the sensor's recording. Okay. When you don't have that on, when you're looking through the viewfinder, you're actually looking uh, down through mm -hmm. a pentaprism, like a prism, and bouncing then, off the mirror and then I going see. through the lens. I follow that. And when you take this picture, that clunk is the mirror flipping up. Oh, it is. So that sound, when you take a picture, is the is the uh, mirror getting out of the way so that the sensor can record. I see. So All it, right. it, it's basically right now, you know, the the image come, the light comes through and hits the mirror and bounces up to a pentaprism into your. Huh. to your vision through okay. the viewfinder uh, and when you take the picture the mirror flips up to expose the sensor which is back here well, that makes sense okay and that's why that makes that large clunk all right clunky sound because it's the actual mirror in there popping mm -hmm. up um uh but the micro four thirds camera which is a new type of camera that's out doesn't mm -hmm. have a mirror in it at all mm -hmm. so it's all when you take the lens off you see the sensor right away uh, but when I take this lens off, see you're looking at the, that's the mirror right there. Yeah, I see. Hey, here's a rather basic question. Uh, differentiating a digital camera from uh, a film camera. Mm -hmm. is, there an, uh, is there an iris in this? 
An iris. You know that... That's what the aperture is. That's okay. It's also so called an iris. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that's in the lens. So it is there. Okay. Yeah, and that's in the lens on a film camera, too. Mm -hmm. So f-stop, aperture, iris. Okay, right. Okay. I wasn't thinking that through. I got yeah. you. Whoa, that was a stupid question. <laughs> Gosh. Good. Well, for those of you out there who are uh, yeah. thinking the no, same stupid thing I was. There's no stupid questions. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and for that, I'm going to send you to the bowels of hell. <laughs> That's a bad looking place, man. <laughs> So you can you can play around and snap a couple pictures if you'd like. Okay. Um, I'm gonna set it on P mode, which is nice and automatic. Well, while we're here, so in you don't hell, have to do anything else. Oh, okay. There you go. So have a have a couple of shots at that. Right. Now uh, this is the focal ring, mm -hmm. which you don't need because it's on autofocus. But okay. you're welcome to go and turn it if you'd like to manually focus. Uh, this is what's called a USM lens, which means you don't have to switch to manual focus to turn the manual focus ring. Mm. Um, the cheaper lenses you do. Mm. Oh, on the cheaper lenses, who you don't turn on the manual focus ring, you will you will kind of strip the gears a bit oh, when you're whoops. trying to turn this. Okay. Uh, so you have to switch between auto and manual. So it, it doesn't lock it. Uh, on in no, that instance, it's not locking focus at all. No. You're just this switches to go between automatic and manual mm -hmm. focus. I'm saying. Um, you do want to uh, hit the turn it to manual if you don't want to. Because as soon as you start to take the picture, mm -hmm. it will auto-focus on you, unless you switch it to manual. Aha! Uh -huh. I see. Okay. So you're welcome to, right now it's in manual focus, and back here is the zoom. So that's the mm -hmm. zoom button. So just play around with that if you like. The nice thing about the 17 to 40 is, as you zoom from 17 to 40, uh, nothing extends from the lens. You will see in some of the other lenses out there, especially the inexpensive ones, uh, that the actual lens kind of unfurls a bit past, yeah, uh, you know, or, or stretches out past the uh, the length of the lens when you zoom. But this one is all contained within the lens. All right, absolute perfection. It, it stays on there for a couple of seconds. If yeah, you want to see coming. it again, you can hit the play button. All right. Okay. So it's all, it was on manual focus. Yeah. Right. So you were were you manually focusing? I was attempting right. to. Okay. Uh, and then autofocus works real well too. You just have to kind of half press it to to get focus, and then you press it all the way down so you take the picture. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. I see. Um, so it's really wide lens. I mean, you can see from from here mm -hmm. how how it really has a really huge uh, uh, millimeter length in capture. I really like this lens a lot as far as um, shooting architecture, okay. landscape photography, mm -hmm. uh, and video. Mm -hmm. So it, it's uh, it's not the best lens for video because you uh, you want to have um, you want to have a what's called fast glass. People call lenses uh, the other pros call lenses glass because there's glass in here. Okay, so, so if you want to sound sexy and cool, you say glass. glass. Like what how much you know, what kind of glass do you own? <laughs> so what's fast glass? Fast glass is a um, a, a lens that's typically an expensive lens that has a fast f-stop. Oh. So okay. this is f4. I paid uh, I paid uh, I paid about 600 for this one, this lens. It's f4. Mm -hmm. um, the f 2.8 super wide angle lens is about $1,200. So it's twice the price of what I paid um, for the uh, uh, 2.8 F. Mm, okay. Versus four. Mm -hmm. So I can't get as, as shallow a depth of field as I could with that 2.8. Oh, okay. So one day I'll buy the 2.8 and sell this. Yeah, I see. So this is nice and wide. And as I said, I use it for, uh, you want to be nice and wide for video. You want to be nice and wide for architecture photography mm -hmm. and for landscape photography. So that's all right. why this is a real great lens. Um, and it's pretty much a great all purpose lens because I can zoom into mm -hmm. nearly what this lens is, this 50. Mm -hmm. I can go into 40. Mm -hmm. um, but you're not going to get a ton of shallow depth of field. So if I'm shooting here, I'm focusing on this guy, mm -hmm. I'm going to take a picture. So you can see that this coke, this my glass is kind of in focus. Mm -hmm. or, or my glass is in focus, and the coke cans are sort of out of focus. Yeah, but not completely. Because mm -hmm. it. Uh, let's go to the. Let's see if we can improve that a bit. 
um, the P setting was probably do, shooting at about F6. So I'm going to go to the AV mode, the mm -hmm. aperture priority, and I'm going to make sure that I'm on F4. So then the camera will do everything else as far as exposure. So I'm going to try that again. Focus on that. Shoot the picture. That's a little better. You see how the Coke cans are even blurrier? Yeah. So that's at F4. Got it. Now, of course, I can use these pictures in my video too because mm. I'm cool like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pop this lens off. I'll put this guy on here. <clears throat> and then I can use the cap from the back of this one to put on that one. Mm -hmm. And put the lens cap back on. Mm -hmm. I don't really need this. Um, you know, there's a there's a field of thought, or there's a, a, a camp of thought here. Um, this lens hood is really only needed for outside to block the sun rays, mm -hmm. but it also makes really good protection for the lens. I suppose it does. Yeah. So having anytime you see a photographer with these on indoors, you're thinking. What's he doing? Mm -hmm. The sunlight's not going to shine into his uh, his, his mm -hmm. lens, but he's he probably has no filter or any kind of protection on the end of his lens, mm -hmm. and he's using his hood basically for you know bumping into things. Sure, it's right. much better to uh, bang up a piece of uh, forty dollar plastic than it is a thousand yeah. dollar lens. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, some photographers, and I actually have one on here, buy uh, UV or clear filters mm -hmm. uh, to put on the end of their lens yeah. uh, for additional protection and weather sealing. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have one on here, but you're adding one more piece of glass or element to the end of the lens, which mm -hmm. does affect your, your, your photography. I suppose it would. Uh, but I, I went Mac Daddy. This is sort of like a, like a minimal decrease in clarity or yeah, something. Or you could get some weird uh, light effects or oh. sometimes. I shot a flame one time, yeah. I shot a fire juggler, yeah. and with a filter, with a relatively cheap filter on the end, and yeah. there was a there was a, a glow oh. caused by, probably caused huh. by the filter, and I couldn't figure out why there was a glow, yeah. and it was because I had a Kind filter. of a haze around the flame? No, it looked like a double flame. Oh, wow. It looked like there was a double image of the huh. flame. It was strange. Weird. Um, hmm. And that was all due to that filter, so. I see. Um, I, this is the most expensive lens I've ever bought, so I did buy a really nice uh, uh, UV filter by a company called Black Black Plus or B Plus W. Yeah. Um, so I might take it off, but it, it's 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 one more piece of mm -hmm. glass protecting mm -hmm. my lens. You know, I haven't really noticed any issues with the with it yet, so okay. I'm leaving it on there for now. I have taken it off my 50, and I don't have one on this at all on this one either. So mm. I'm kind of it's a scary thought. You want to protect your lens yeah. with the lens hoods first. That's a better way to go. Uh, if you're really scared about it, uh, you can use a UV filter. Just make sure you don't have any uh, ab aberrations, right? Aberration? Aberrations? Aberrations, mm -hmm. yeah. Make sure you don't have any aberrations or any kind of weird flare, or if you're shooting fire, definitely mm -hmm. don't use one. All right, so I've got this 50 on my lens now, mm -hmm. and I want to show you this. Um, 50 millimeter on a full frame camera is 50 millimeter. As I said, okay. on a crop sensor body, it's uh, about an 85 or 80. Okay. Millimeter. Um, a 50 miller, millimeter is the classic lens that was used on in photography because it's closest to what we see out of our eyes. Ah. So, it's, you know, I'm like, I'm looking at that Coke can. Mm -hmm. I can raise this up and take a picture and it's kind of... Kind of what my, my mm. eyes seeing right yeah. there. Um, now I'm going to go on AV mode and I'm going to go all the way down to 1.4. And this time I'm going to take... Uh, so now I'm going to focus on this at uh, 1.4 and mm -hmm. I'm on aperture priority mode. And this is kind of... It really hunts sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to manual and just manually focus this guy myself. Because the the depth of field is so narrow, yeah, uh, it might. I want to focus on the front part of the glass, but not on the back of the glass. I see. Look at that. See, look how blurred that is. Hmm. It's much more blurred in the background. It sure is. So um, that creates uh, being at one point four f. It creates much more of a sort of professional look. Because mm -hmm. anytime. 
uh, the background's all blown out, it feels more professional. Mm -hmm. And but, a feeling of depth as well. As yeah, so try that out. So you're in AV mode, so you've already... So when you're in AV mode and you're setting it on mm -hmm. uh, F1.4, you're pretty much on automatic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're just telling the camera, I always want to stay on uh, F1.4, don't change that on me. Okay. Now how do you uh, prepare it for the next photo? Oh, you can just slightly tap the shutter. Oh. Like that. I said, yeah, slightly, slightly tap. Hey, that's a good picture. Did you see that? <laughs> just, let's see. Hit the play button. Hey, awesome. Good stuff, huh? Yeah, out of focus yeah. and on a cranked angle. All right. You're going to dub in some music to dance by? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I focused in on the top of this this lens cover. Uh huh. Yeah. And then everything else back there is everything soft, nice and, and soft in the background. Mm -hmm. Now there's a professional word for soft background. It's a Japanese word called bokeh. Okay. And it's Japanese for blur. Blur. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Bokeh. Okay. Yeah. Bokeh. That's all you need to know in Japan. Just get over there and say bokeh. 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 <laughs> all right. Um, I can so anyway, it. if you're a pro, you talk about your fast glass and what beautiful bokeh it creates. So what? Uh, tell me this: um, when you pop in a fresh battery in this subject, mm -hmm. um, how long can you? How long can your shoot last? Would you estimate on a full? Well, are you charge? talking about photography or video? Well, I both. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you probably get about an hour and a half to two hours on a, on a camera battery shooting video. Okay, that's video. Um, now, the, uh, a battery will last, um, I don't know, it'll, it really depends. It'll probably take you, a, a single battery will probably last you um, 800 shots, 800 still shots or so. Okay. I think when... You get past, uh, I, I easily shoot in uh, some of my events, I shoot um, over a two hour period. I can shoot 900, 900 to 1,000 shots in two hours, mm, quite wow. easily. Yeah. Especially if I'm doing uh, some kind of sports photography mm -hmm. and I'm capturing uh, several frames per second. Oh yeah. So I'm doing lots of bop, 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 yeah. trying to get not only stuff in focus, but to capture action. Okay. I can pop off 1,000 shots in an hour. I suppose so pretty easily doing that um, and that's a whole lot of fun when you get back to your computer and you've got to sort you've got to sort through all yeah. that stuff yeah. okay. that's why it's important to make enough money uh, so that you can make an assistant do that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah find all the good shots and mm -hmm. then I'll and then bring them to me and I'll process them yeah in fact the, the assistants <laughs> do the processing too a lot of times oh okay they'll go in and do the color correction and so uh, the photographer simply takes the photos kind of just takes on. the photo and passes it off and then the assistant kind of narrows them down for him and, oh, yeah. and corrects them for him and crops them well you might not crop them but mm -hmm. anyway wow always good to have an assistant I think. Gotcha. all right so we've got the 50 millimeter lens on right now mm -hmm. um, what was uh, what are the questions you have about the 50 we, uh, you know, it's called a prime, mm -hmm. and primes come in like 24, 28. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can get down to um, um, eight millimeter. Oh. But when you start getting that low, it's typically a fisheye lens. You'll get that sort of curved oh, round okay. edge. Yeah. Um, what's cool about the 17 is you don't get any of that kind of. Mm. You get some distortion in vertical uh, lines and stuff. So. Oh. If I were to go on the 17 millimeter, mm -hmm. uh, some of the edges will be curved a little bit, mm. but you don't get a round fisheye yeah. look. Okay. Some people like that look, fisheye. Well, it depends on what you're after, yeah. I suppose. So this is a really great portrait lens, uh, yeah. 50 millimeter, as I said. Uh, on a full frame sensor, you can shoot indoors, but on a crop body, it's going to be like 80 millimeter, mm -hmm. which means you're going to have to back up 10 or 20 feet to get a whole person in, into the shot. Okay. With a fifty millimeter, bah! With a fifty millimeter on a on a crop body, mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna have to back up about twenty feet to get a whole person in a shot. So, mm -hmm. um, so really, if you have a crop body, um, I think a better prime to start with is like a twenty four or twenty eight millimeter, which is an equivalent to you know multiply that point by point six, and you'll um, or one point six. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. did I say point six? I, I think had, you did it first. I did it first, so I'm correcting myself now. 1.6 1. 1. 6 is what you multiply it by. Okay. So um, a 50 is a great portrait lens for mm -hmm. uh, like a torso. 
okay. of one person. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's it's what your eye sees. So if you're gonna walk around with one lens, a 50s 50s a nice way to go. Okay. Squirt, 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 squirt. Now see, it's got dust in there. It's not getting out. And then you mm -hmm. want to go to your trusty pen. Let's work on that a bit more. So that's the benefit of a prime 50 okay. millimeter lens that has such a low f-stop is to get that bokeh. Okay. Bokeh. Okay. All right. So let's okay. talk. Let's talk about mat this macro lens. All right. Pull this off here. Set that down. You don't want to tilt your camera up when you're changing lenses because you can get dust in there real easy. So you want to actually try to maybe cover your lens with your hand if you're mm -hmm. going to have the lens off of it or mm -hmm. keep it tilted down a bit. Uh, but covering your lenses with your hands is a bad I idea. See. It seems to make sense. Yeah, you don't want to get dust in there because you can't really, can't really get in there and like clean your mirror or anything. Mm -hmm. You're pretty much just going to have to, all you can really do to clean the inside of your camera is just blow air in there when it's upside down and hope for the best. Yeah. Okay. So, you can also send it into Canon for you know wait weeks and spend a hundred bucks. While they together. disassemble it and yeah. professionally clean it. Yeah. Uh, but this is one thing that's cool about these cameras. Uh, when you turn them in on and off, they shake the sensor slightly to shake off any dust. Really? Yeah. So when I turn it on and it says sensor cleaning. Anyway, when you turn it on, it says sensor cleaning because yeah. it's actually like vibrating the sensor. Slightly vibrating the oh. sensor to shake off any dust that might be on it. Wow. All right, so this is a 50 millimeter, uh, sorry, this is a 100 millimeter uh, macro lens. Uh, there's two versions of this lens. There's the, um, the EF uh, 100 millimeter, and then there's the EF 100 millimeter L, which is twice the price. Again, okay. this is, um, I think this is about $500 new. I got it for... Uh, I got it for 400 used. Hmm. So I got about $150 off by buying okay. this used. That's good. Um, so it's about a thousand bucks for the 100 millimeter L. Yeah. But the 100 millimeter L has image stabilization built into the lens. I see. Um, which is really important if you're shooting uh, macro photography handheld. Mm -hmm. You want that extra bit of stabilization. But I see. pretty much everybody shoots macro photography on a tripod. Because mm. You you can't you're at such a small depth of field that you, need you really need that absolute as as stabilization. So I, I didn't feel the need to have the image stabilization because I was going to be on a tripod when shooting um, when shooting. Right, I fall that. There goes the lens cover. Oh no! Ugh. All right, so you'll see from this that you can get. Quite close. Wow, <laughs> you really can. Yeah, and it's right now. I'm, I'm still on aperture priority, and this is at uh, 2.8, so it's very relatively narrow. Mm -hmm. And oh, okay, I had it on autofocus for a second. Uh, this lens will tend to hunt. Uh -huh. So if it, instead of making a micro adjustment in focus, it'll yeah. go all the way to one end, all the way back, and then all the way back to the middle. Yeah. It's really a pain in the butt sometimes, especially in. I said this is a pretty decent. Um, fashion lens, but sometimes it'll it'll hunt like crazy to try to get focus. So yeah. uh, it's probably better just to work in in, um, in manual focus. Okay. So I'm going to do that now. And you know what? The thing about macro photography, mm -hmm. when you get in close enough, you stop using the, um, the, the focus and you might as well just move the camera forward and back. Oh, I see. In, in mm -hmm. macro photography. So I'm going to get kind of close to this here and shoot that so see wow um and they make these things called um uh, macro slider rails yeah and it's a Mount base that it sits on and like then you track. can on a track that moves left and right and huh. forward and back oh wow and when you're on top of your tripod on a flower you want to focus then by moving the camera hmm. and so you can micro adjust these little this little uh oh, that's this little track left and right and forward and back huh. you can get those for about uh 40 50 bucks the cheap ones and mm. then the, they go several hundred for the more expensive kind mm. i bought one of the cheap ones uh 
but the the more weight you put on it, the less smooth it it, it tracks, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a lesson learned in buying one of those cheap ones. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, and then as I said, this also is a at at, a, at the hundred millimeter length is a really nice lens for shooting anything far away too. See. Oh yeah. And I can focus on something out that far and everything in between. So I can hit I can take a picture of that uh tripod right there. Oh, yeah. And then I can go all the way out and take a picture of that uh that light switch. Huh. And then I can come right here and take a a stupid close picture of this uh, lens right here. Well, hot so it's, it's a very versatile <laughs> lens and that's what's really great kind of about this with that. lens is that you can it's great for macro photography, but it's got all these other uses yeah. built in as well. That's great. Um, the guys that uh, do really extreme macro photography, and I'll have yeah. to show you that kind of like bug portrait stuff. Yeah. They put uh, extension tubes on this in addition to the 100 millimeter, grief. which even gets you closer. Yeah. Now at that, um, at that um, um, distance from the subject, the depth of field is super narrow. Yeah. Ridiculously narrow. Yeah. Like kind of the way it was kind of narrow on a 50 millimeter. Mm -hmm. It's micro millimeter uh, narrow. Yeah. Thing. And so what they do is they do a thing called focus stacking. Okay. You take, uh, if you have an object, you take it at all the focal lengths all the way through. So mm -hmm. it's like, so the front's in focus, the object's in focus, the back's in focus. Oh. And then you use a software to stitch those all together. Uh -huh. So everything's in focus. That's called focus stacking. That's fantastic. So that's a cool little thing. I think Photoshop has that built in, but then there's also some other programs that do it as well. Oh, very sophisticated. Right. Um, questions? Do you want to try it out? <laughs> if not, if you don't try it out, I'm going to throw you to... I'm going to throw you down into that pit right there. Oh! <laughs> Hello! Yeah. Hello. Or if you don't try it out, I'm going to have that old lady give you a big hug. Hello, <laughs> madam. <laughs> a big hug. All right, let's see here. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty much, if you're taking something close, you're pretty much just moving the camera, but... <laughs> this is the best part of the video. <laughs> if not the slowest. I did it! Did you? Let's see. Gosh, yes. Alrighty then. Yeah, see? Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, look it, look it. Uh, so you can use the autofocus. It it does work. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Uh, but as I said, sometimes you're dealing with such a narrow depth of field, you don't really want to trust it. Um, see if I can get it to. See, yeah, it's real. It's a little slow in autofocusing this mm -hmm. lens, and sometimes it hunts. It'll go all the way, as I said, from the beginning to the uh, the outer. There it goes. You hear it? It yeah. just went. I heard it. Yeah. It. Uh, and that's annoying, especially if you're shooting. If you are shooting fashion photography with it, you want to be. You're yeah. Snapping those girls quick. Lickety you don't want to lose the shot because your camera's. So what I rather do is shoot it on manual focus and just mm -hmm. pop a bunch of pictures off. Yeah. Just set the shutter speed on you know five frames a second or mm -hmm. something like that if you really feel like you need a range mm -hmm. and just get used to manually focusing. I see. You know, like a pro. Very good. Yep. <laughs> That's great. Isn't that great? Your pores. And I don't know if anybody will want to see this. Yikes. <laughs> do the eye. Do the Yikes. eye. Do the eye. Okay. Nice and red. Thanks. Yeah, you want to get a few in there because it's going to be a narrow depth of field. Not bad. Yeah, and I have some of those extension tubes, which are you know, yeah, I'm not gonna go upstairs and get because I don't feel like it. But 
Uh, you can buy those for 60 bucks or so, or you yeah. can spend a few hundred bucks on them. Canon makes one that uh, allows you to continue to talk to the lens electronically hmm. as far as aperture and stuff and, and, mm -hmm. and autofocus, mm -hmm. but you don't really want, again, you don't really need autofocus. You're going to be manually focusing. So yeah. the cheap uh, extension tubes are just as well. Just do just as well if you're on a budget, like everyone's on a budget. Who's not on a budget? Uh, yeah. All right. So that's that's some macro photography uh, and a 50 millimeter and 17 to 40. Splendid. Right. Yeah, let's go to Hawaii. Okay. Ha ha. Oh, wow. <laughs> this has been fascinating, Mr. Nerd. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is the most nerding you've done for at least half a day. Indeed. Any other questions? None that I can think of. Okay. How did you get so nerdy, sir? <laughs> Years of practice. <laughs> ha ha! <laughs> yeah. So kids, don't try this nerdiness at home. Yeah, like when I was in high school, there was this large group of kids that were um, talking to each other and hanging out and doing things. And I said, none of that's for me. <laughs> I'd like to lock myself in a dark room with a few friends and play some Dungeons and Dragons. I think I remember those days. And so that made you the man you are today. It, it pretty much, yeah. I see. That's fascinating, Mr. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's all the camera bullshit, so. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, my whole blog's about that. Yeah. So this has been Damien Dodd of DSLR Nerd. I want to thank my special guest, Brian Kelly, for coming out today. All the way from uh, Atlanta, Indiana. Gosh. And thanks for having me, Mr. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a blast. <laughs> If you like this content, click on my logo down in the corner there. No, it's down in the corner. That corner. That right, right. See it? It's right there. there. No, you're you're on top of it now. I'm on it? Okay. It's kind of like right here. Okay, this. It's kind of like right see here. It? Corner Can of this you table. See it? I can't see it. It's I right don't know there. Why. So click on that logo click right it. there if you want to subscribe to my channel. And check my blog out at dslrnerd.com. Oh, and if you want uh, to contact Brian, and check out some of his amazing uh, vintage style fantasy art. Can I say vintage style? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Uh, old school, old school yeah. looking uh, fantasy art. A lot then, of pen and ink and ink wash. Ink wash. Then check Black out and white and monochromatic. Check out theillustrationpit.com. 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 We'll be looking for you. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, and you have a terrific day.